Mm-hmm. There, there's one more wrinkle. I, I, it's not really in your question. I wanted to mention. If you go ahead. Um, we um, um, reared in the, the incubator that you know incubated on Live and Mova and you know um, provide the seed fund for Android, etc. Um, um, you may have seen a, a. I didn't. I didn't expect it to get out to the press because I gave a presentation at Columbia University yeah, where I it. mentioned the new technology. But you probably saw this thing that came out, and this one picked up. You guys picked it up. It got picked up by a couple other blogs, and I have to be in New York talking to Wired Magazine. It was interesting because I was speaking about it in fairly general terms, and then, then they saw that it, it had gotten out, and so they wanted more detail, et cetera. <laughs> so you, what can I do? It spilled out. Um, yeah. All right. Well, a lot of people don't realize just what a big deal that technology is going to be for, for on live. Um, it is effectively zero latency internet connectivity. Really? Wow. Yeah. So what we have running right here in Palo Alto, out of Alan office, is is wireless connectivity that is much faster than cellular networks, has no congestion, and has sub-millisecond latency. Now, to give you a comparison, 3G has about 150 milliseconds of latency. Now, because we've worked with AT&T, they're one of our investors on LTE, which is, you know, 4G, we're able to yeah. get that down to about 40 milliseconds of latency. Um, really just for on live, not for general usage, but for on live, there actually is a special mode in 4G, which will um, give us that lower latency. But that's just for AT&T, what, though? No, no, it'll be for LTE generally. They okay. added it to the standard. Oh, okay. um, LTE is um, AT&T, Verizon, you know, European, uh, all over the world, people are pretty much standardizing an LTE for 4G. 4, LTE is going to be pretty darn good. Um, it's, yeah. Um, but still, 40 milliseconds of latency for gamers is still, you know, for most people, 40 milliseconds is awesome. You know, for all these enterprise things we showed, it's like whatever. It's like you'll feel like you're there, right? Yeah. But for, um, you know, for a first-person shooter, no, no, we want it down to nothing, right? So um, what, I'll, what we'll be rolling out with this new technology um, is online integrated into the system so that you'll have... You know, that, you know the, with the last mile, no matter what you do, whether you DSL, cable modem, fiber, whatever, you're always going to have somewhere between, you know, 15 to 25 milliseconds of latency. Then there's, there's other inefficiencies in just the way the Internet works. So with this technology, I mean, literally, you're going to have, um, um, you know, um, latencies that are so low and bandwidth that is so high that we'll be able to be far lower latency than a local device. Now you go and say, how can that be? Because you still have, of course, the you know, compression time and you have the transport through the internet and so on. Yeah. So check this out. If I were to go and um, deliver a what's called a, a 4K resolution um, uh, video signal. Now this is what we do at uh, Reardon. We have a, I, I could probably point you at a link which has a sample of a video like this. It's the new resolution that's going to be used in movie theaters. It's 4,096 pixels wide. Wow. Okay. So they call it 4K, right? So we can deliver uh, 4K resolution press video, and even with the compression, it's much higher resolution than even 1080p. Um, and we can deliver it not at 60 frames per second, but at 240 frames a second. Wow, that's so we're running at the native 240 frame per second resolution of your TV set, right? Yeah. And your TV set would just hang on the wall. There's no wires hooked up to it at all. In fact, the wires slow it down. And in fact, the processing in the TV would normally slow it down. So there's no lag in the TV either, right? So it just hooks up to this, um, this new Dido wireless stuff. And there it is. You have sub-millisecond connectivity. By the way, the audio is surround sound and completely uncompressed. So you have full range audio. Um, you'll have 240 hertz 4K resolution video. And because it's, it's running at 240 hertz, the actual frame time is less than four milliseconds, right? So if you were to use a local device, whether it's PC, console, any local device, okay, by the time it's fin- by its- we will have your-, your screen drawn before, you know, your screen, you know, your data sent to the data center, the new frame computed, the video compressed, sent through this new wireless technology, and then arriving on your screen before a normal computer monitor would even finish drawing. A 60 hertz screen. Wow, that's that's now, crazy. How cool is that? 
<laughs> now, is that that's just going to be through the LTE, or would that be through like? No, a, no, 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 no. LTE can't do that. No, it's just through uh, the new wireless technology. Oh, we okay, okay, okay. Oh, I see. Um, so that's okay. So this new wireless technology will enable on live to achieve lower latency than any local device, and all, because there won't be any bandwidth limits really for it either, and so it's a. It's something, you know, you notice that we have investors that are carriers, you know. Yeah. So our carrier partners, we just announced a relationship with Juniper, our network partners. MOVA, the people doing the face, facial stuff, that we're, you're going to see all the pieces come together. And as I said, it didn't it leak out not quite the way I hoped it to leak out. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were hoping to do a little more of a coherent explanation of this, and I'm sorry that it's coming out, but yeah. I'd rather you kind of hear sort of how the pieces fit together than it yeah. you know, just kind of spilling out the way it's been going out, right? Yeah. Well, when when, yeah. Do you, when do, can we expect that to roll out? Is that something that's going to be soon? Um, it's, it, so it's, it's, it's in development now. I mean, it's not till next year, I would say, that this is coming out. But oh, yeah. uh, nonetheless, uh, you'll, you'll see it. I mean, basically what you're, you know, we're working with the infrastructure that's there today, but you'll be seeing um, results of um, what happens with dedicated infrastructure um, coming soon. You know, some of the people who are doing the, the uh, beta testing in, um, in the UK at, with BT who are using um, you know, BT Infinity are, are yeah. seeing a little bit of this in a sense because you know, they're, they're, they're getting a fiber connection that's hooked up to the carrier that's also um, running on live. And there is a, but it's a, um, so anyways, I, I think that the future that's coming is, is very, very exciting, and it's not what people think. There's, people are so focused on the present, you know, yeah. it, it, it's sometimes frustrating me, and uh, we're doing the very best we can with the present, and it's, we're doing super cool stuff, but uh, the future is going to be utterly mind-blowing. You're going to be looking at a scene that you're going to have a tough time distinguishing between what you're seeing on the scene and what is in the reality of the room around you. Yeah. Sounds pretty incredible. So that's where that whole wireless thing comes in. Everyone kind of missed the fact that it's ultra low latency and that's unlimited bandwidth. Well, who needs ultra low latency and unlimited bandwidth? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's why I was wondering. I was wondering if this was something that was going to be separate from OnLive or was going to be integrated into OnLive somehow. And now it'll I know. Be integra- it'll be, it, well, it is a separate company, but it'll be integrated but it's with OnLive. Is that, um, is that the main way you plan on using yeah. it or? Is what? Is that the main way you plan on using the technology? Is just for on live, or do you plan on? Well, using I wouldn't. Have, we wouldn't have had to develop something that's this ambitious if it were not for on live. Um, you know, uh, there's not many other applications out there that need such low latency, right? Yeah. Um, so we, it was a big consideration, and um, the other thing we knew is, um, I mean, on live is is nice in the sense that. It does require a large amount, I mean, a relatively large amount of bandwidth. I mean, compared to, say, you know, I don't know, email. I mean, these days it's not a large amount of bandwidth compared to, um, um, you know, to video, right? Yeah. Um, but it is, it's still, um, when you get to, when you start doing, one of the reasons where we've been tuning the algorithm to go and bring it down is when you get to things like 4K resolution, um, and, well, particularly then when you start doing, you know, uh, 3D at 4K. You know, like, for example, that's what they would use to um, project, you know, something like Avatar in a movie theater. They do 4K at 3D. Um, but now it's going to be in your home. In fact, it could be in a portable device. As I said, it's going to look exceptionally um, um, real. And when, you're, when you get into that, it is the case that... that that is more bandwidth than we're going to need now, but it still is a fixed amount of bandwidth, right? It's not a variable amount of bandwidth. I mean, the trouble with, with downloading or with websites is that you get these bursts of bandwidth where yeah. when you're trying to download that game, boy, you wish you had a gigabit of bandwidth, right? <laughs> yeah. but then you're not using hardly any bandwidth at all, you know? So with online, it's a steady amount of, of reasonable amount of bandwidth. It's a little high these days, but in two or three years, everyone's going to think, oh my gosh, you know, the amount of bandwidth needed for... Um, you know, streaming online is, is de minimis, you know? Yeah, yeah. 